Dan Crowley here, Chagas, and I'm also a member of the AHI Celtic Technical Working Group. And we're here just to have a bit of a chat here on the practical side of how to dry off coals. At this stage we've talked to our vet now and we have our list of, you know, it's important that you discuss with your vet your dry coal treatment plan and you're at the stage now where you're going drying off these coals. I suppose preparation is crucial. So the starting point really would be the clipping of the tails and making sure that you've as clean a coals as possible. Um, you know, investing in a cordless battery run clipper is a great investment on any farm and should be done multiple times during the year. And we're looking then at getting ready for preparation, I suppose, is the crucial thing. <clears throat> you know, we need time, we need plenty of help, but even getting a few bits and pieces together like new gown, head torch, reading glasses if you're going, you know, if you're long sighted, you need your reading glasses for this. Your wipes, whether it's cotton wool, metal aided spirits. Um, a lot of people are using these facial wipes, which are very good with metal spirits as well. For keep gloves, like a box of gloves, 25, 30 euros. That's 150 pairs. You know, two boxes will do 100 cows. No harm in doing a new set of gloves for every one that you're doing. Um, and having your tubes organised and ready and lay out inside. We've seen a number of farmers investing in a builder's belt, so it keeps the tubes nice and close to them. So if you don't have help that they can access and can give it to you, that can give you the tubes very readily. You know, those kind of little tips are, are very help, helpful get, in getting ready up to this. But getting the tails tipped up, uh, uh, coming up to drying off is very important. Look, we're going inside and probably in a housing type of scenario, so there's going to be cows in and out. So we're going to have cows that have antibiotics potentially, and no antibiotics, or just sealed only cows. So we need to identify these clearly before we start, so we can identify the cows that we're going to dry off with appropriate marking spray. The tail paint marking spray is a very good idea for this one. It's very good to last, it'll stay, so if a cow broke out, there's usually a good chance of, of identifying that they're, that they're the cows that have been dried off. The crucial thing with this, and selective anyway, and, and with antibiotics, is that the teeth ends are spotless, and this is the hygiene, hygiene, hygiene is the crucial part of it. So the teeth openings have to be spotlessly clean so that we're not going to infuse any infection. Because you have to remember, these cows that are selectively owned, there's no infection inside in those other. They were picked out because they have a low cell count and they have no infection. So we're going to try and put in a sealer and make sure that no infection gets in there. So we don't want to introduce it. So the big message here is that the teeth sealer needs to sit at the base of the teeth. It's not massaged up into the quarter. So when I administer, when I'm prepping my cows for administration, you should clean from the head and tube from the tail. So that it avoids me contaminating the base of the teeth when I'm going forward wiping the teeth. So start at the front left, wiping from the front left, front right, back right, back left. And then I'll tube from the back, back left, anti-clockwise, back right, where the sealer is sitting as a plug. So I'm going to pinch, <clears throat> I'm going to administer my antibiotics up into the quarter and I'm going to massage that them then up to the other. Massage them up into the other. Then when you're going, you're administering your sealer, you administer your sealer by pinching the top of the teeth as we've shown here and you administer your sealer so that it'll sit as a plug at the end of the teeth and you'll move around anti-clockwise then around the tooth cow. Look, it's crucial that the, the, the dry cow's environment is clean. The two weeks after you dry them off seems to be the biggest impediment where people get caught that they're just not paying enough attention to the cows when they're freshly dried off, that two week period. Keeping the cubicles clean has been out and, and having enough cubicles is a crucial thing. Good records then, we need to know the cows, which cows got an antibiotic and a sealer, which one's got a sealer on their own. Because to avoid bald tank residues and to see how did it work next spring when they calved down. Were the teeth seal only cows successfully in the, in, in, over the winter period and vice versa. I suppose a common comment we'd ask is what would happen with a leaking cow that's on cubicles. Some farmers will prioritise them that they could dry them off and put them out onto grass and then after a week, 10 days, come back in. For a lot of farmers, that's not practical. So what you'll do is seal your cow, leave her for a week and then reseal them then in. Bring them in and reseal them. I think one of the other issues that's a significant issue at farm level is the group sizes that are done at drying off. They're too big. Whatever about the number you'll do off in a day, in that one group within the parlour should be no greater than six. You drive in your six cows, you dry them, you seal them, out the gate, clean down your platform and bring in another six. 
drawings and depending on your health and your capabilities that could go up to 20, 30 cows depending on it is. But it's very important that the cows are drafted out properly, that you've gone, you've had your breakfast, recharge the batteries and then go in and do your bunches of six and ideally have help and be prepared for it. Thank you.